In case you missed it, here's what happened last time on From the Ground Up. I think he might be the best water boy we have. We're looking on track for to try to get a Tuesday four. You know, we got to go vertical. The lift of the first steel is a major milestone. For those of you that are not aware, this is the first engineered lift that we've done on the project. If you can't mitigate a hazard, you don't do the job. November 13th, 2017, the first shovel of dirt was removed from a 62-acre plot of land just west of the Las Vegas Strip. The Raiders, united with a team of tireless leaders from Nevada, are creating an ultra-modern, permanent stadium for the Raider Nation to call home. These are the stories of the people and the project, told from the ground up. We're a year into the construction of the new stadium, and while the pace has been frantic, the team takes a minute to reflect on what they've seen and learned over the past 12 months. Or one year from groundbreaking on the stadium. So to see where we came from, from the first initial meetings and all the work that went into it before we even broke ground a year ago, it's pretty exciting and it is pretty rapid. I think the progress is pretty astonishing. It was really great to set our first piece of structural steel. A lot of our work the first seven months was down in the lower bowl and from the street level, nobody would really even see that we were here or what we were doing. The first year is largely starting up. That's where you have all of these expectations and hopes. I'm surprised at how large the building seems already. Uh, we've got steel going up, obviously, and we've got precast stadia being placed into the building. Never thought that within a year, there could be such a huge presence already. Well, these jobs take a lot of people. You know, We'll put 9,000 people through the gates here, probably, before this project is done. Everybody think safe, be safe, work safe. Keep that on your mind. We've had good success, you know, and these folks are buying into our programs and buying into the safety and the culture that we're trying to create. I'm pleasantly surprised by the reaction in this market. It's incredibly supportive. It's not just pride from the Raiders, but it's pride for the whole state of Nevada. There are an awful lot of moving parts. To be able to manage a schedule that's got literally 19,000 individual tasks is just a constant battle. Bigger project, there's a lot of bigger process, bigger problems. These things come with challenges. They come with curveballs that happen you know, on a weekly basis. So it's really just trying to figure out how to not make every one of them be a weak wrecker. If there ever comes a day where we feel like we have everything under control, everything's running perfectly, we've obviously overlooked something crucial. Take whatever that particular issue is and minimize it as best you can. It's been great to see how the design team has come together with the construction team and with even the guys out in the field installing it to, you know, pick up a problem and then solve it right then and there, implement the solution, and keep us on track for progress. It doesn't take much to put something on a piece of paper and show what it looks like and become infatuated with it. In year two, that's when you find out how much things actually cost during year one and what a challenge the budget truly is. On the positive note, we did run the design past the owner yesterday, and that was well received. It seemed like his real concern was operational. He blessed the design that we put together. It's more of just, you know, the user experience, how they get in, to get out, what happens when they leave the premise. Yeah, I think it was a really good meeting. I think it's important to get it all into one concise location. We'll reassemble in two weeks and, and keep that on track. People ask me, you know, how do I sleep at night? I sleep like a baby. I wake up crying every couple of hours. Entering year two, work on decks, cores, and steel continues around the circumference of the building. Today, Raiders owner Mark Davis makes an impromptu visit to the site, something he often does to show his respect and appreciation for the workers, and meet some of the folks making this lifelong dream a reality. It's really starting to actually seem true. Yeah, yeah, once, you, once stuff starts coming out of the ground, it's when you really start yeah. feeling it. How's progress look? 
It's unbelievable, as I was saying, I can't pretty build a fort this there. Dean Galvin, nice to meet you, really sir. Really great to meet you, too. Nice Thanks to meet you. It's going to be a beautiful place. Man. I can't well, wait for the, you guys are making for, the, it that way. for the finished product. Yeah, the I can't wait to come back. Yeah. Everything. How are you, Mark Davis? Great to meet you. Willie, nice to meet you. Hey, Willie. What's up? Did you make sure I want to pick that up? All right, man. Pleasure to meet you. What's your name? Aldo Rodriguez. Aldo, pleasure yeah. to meet you, man. I'm an LA fan from the LA. Are you? Yeah. Uh, well, Raider Nation. I love your dad with me. All the things you did for us. Yeah, we miss him. Really oh, miss him yeah. a lot. Thank well, you so much. Okay. Wear it with pride. I will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. What's the Raider All right, guys. Thanks. So, while MD continues to survey the completed work, the crews get ready to set the first of 2,000 plus pieces of precast concrete. What we're doing right now is we're running through, getting the crane set up, doing all the checks before we make a pick, all the rigging, all the parts and pieces, components of the pick to make sure they're what the plan says they are. And we're going to start setting columns first. In a stadium holding 65,000, the seating bowl is one of the largest facets in the total construction process. This is comprised of three things. The columns, which anchor the bowl structure to the ground, on top of which sit the raker beams, which in turn support the risers, often referred to as stadia, where eventually the actual seats will mount. The project is using a process called precasting, which means they're creating reusable forms to pour concrete. This method is quite common and actually dates all the way back to the Roman aqueducts. No need to reinvent the wheel, right? By moving this activity off-site, 15 miles away, the team is able to save immediate space on the construction site while more easily controlling the quality and production time of the materials. Something changes virtually every day, but it's been good teamwork and everybody's on the same page to make sure everything flows properly. We're getting ready to go to an RFID tracking system. Due to the skews at the end and the way the configuration of the stadium works, virtually every piece is different. But the only thing that works the same is between the 40 and the 40, and that's not a lot of pieces. It has its challenges, but it's going to be a unique stadium. It's going to be good. These are risers that we're pouring. These are the kind of stadium seating areas. We have to pour them in lifts. So we poured the bottom lift here. Then you'll have a retaining wall after about a half hour. These guys are finishing up, leaving uh, the nice surface that you'll be walking on that your seats will be bolted to. And then about a half hour, pull the second lift, and just one after another, day after day. They're getting ready to set a cage for the tub forms. Tub forms a unique piece. It's usually involved with the suites for the stadium. Due to its size, it takes a lot of rebar. So they tie the cage outside of the form and set it into place prior to pouring. In addition to the usual rebar cages we've become accustomed to seeing, the precast pieces have additional reinforcement with a process known as pre-stressing. They'll stress it to 31,000 pounds. Once tension, when the concrete is cured, it'll have flexural strength. If you were to just do it with rigid steel versus using pre-stressing, it's gonna be more apt to crack, which is gonna create exposure for moisture, which your life expectancy for the concrete is gonna be cut in half. So it all comes off of the original uh, architect's drawing. You'll have structures that require more strength versus other areas that are more architectural and don't need so much strength. And that determines how much steel we need to order and how to put it into a piece, how many different puzzle pieces we have to make. When you erect it on site, you don't have much room to change stuff. When it comes down to it, the connections are the biggest thing. You have to be pretty precise with your embed placement. You have to think of different ways to made up different materials. So your precast is concrete, and then you have steel that you're connecting everything to. In order to complete the work, the operation runs two shifts around the clock. Back on site, the installation crew starts the engineered lift, and the precast race around the bowl is underway. Tonight, we're scheduled to do eight pieces. 
In this first erection sequence, we average anywhere from 12 to 13 pieces a night. Once we get later in the stage of the, of the project, we'll actually have three precast cranes at our peak setting pieces um, at each crane. So when we're doing that, we're upwards of you know, 30 pieces a day. Since this is night number one, and this is the first time we're doing this, we want to make sure that everything that we planned on paper is checking out in the field. What you see out here tonight is, by all stretch of the imagination, a culmination of what we've been planning for the last year and a half. We're very big on making a plan and working the plan. That's how we keep people safe, and that's how we send them home at the end of the night, the way they came. Everything fit in, I mean, no hiccups. You know, it, it went better than we could have expected. You know, they, Western Pacific's fabricated some great pieces, GM Construction's done some great planning, and obviously, as you've seen tonight, some, some great work in the field. Meanwhile, the Mortensen McCarthy team begins to look inward at the maze of complex plumbing and electrical installations. The mechanicals are underway and racing to catch the exterior's progress. Stay with us as we burrow deeper into what it takes to design and build a modern coliseum. The people, the pride, and the process as we continue on this unprecedented journey from the ground up. <laughs>